Welcome to Mastering and Guideline in Ultrasound and Echo. Hi everyone. In this clips, we are going to talk about the tips and mistakes that happen and needs in plaques for those measure, uh, parameters measurements. Look at this uh, endiostolic plaques view picture. Three texts did different, three different measurements. What do you think? Which of them is correct? Or when we have sigmoid, prominent sigmoid, which spot is the best for measurement and more accurate? Or when uh, the patient doesn't have plaques window, for example, patient have severe COPD or had open heart surgery or on ventilator and we don't have access on parasternal window or we don't have it plaques at all. So how we can find and measure those parameters that we need on the plaques in these cases? Okay, now let's see uh, how we solve those problems. First, I want to explain a little uh, how we, uh, a, a good plaques has what character and criteria. A good uh, plaques, first, uh, optimizing the depth. Should be at least uh, interest area that is posterior and pericardium, and aorta should be show up on your uh, image. Second, you uh, accept the small people and young or young people like the kids based on the sector width you usually don't see apex of the heart so if you see base uh, apex of the heart you are too much to the apex just slide to the aorta means go to the midline slide it your probe to the midline it show less left ventricle and more aorta or vice versa. Second, the orientation direction of the septum and uh, ascending aorta. Usually the distance between these two should be equal and it create this angle. With heel toe, you can make it this uh, septum more horizontal or more oblique, just heel toe or rocking. Heel toe or rocking, you can make it septum more horizontal or more oblique is with based on this maneuver you can fix the orientation of the heart on your uh, monitor and uh, third you have to optimize your uh, gain as long as you see endocardium that time you are good optimized doesn't matter if it's hazy or noisy or not the, your point and your target is you see endocardium on both walls. Uh, then you have to make sure that cooptation uh, is at the center of the aorta, how you can fix it. If the patient ha doesn't have bicuspid aorta, it should be uh, co-obtained and closing at the center of the aorta. How we fix it? You are off axis. Imagine this is your aorta, aortic valve. You are off axis. A little slide it with slide and twisting. You can keep it uh, at the center. After you had uh, good images, you are going to do measurement. The, as a general rule, as the mat rules, uh, you know, the diameter of any structure is a line that is lined perpendicular or make a right angle to both sides of the structure. For example, let me get this one here. There is a structure you want to me measure thickness. So the line that is perpendicular to both sides or make it right angle is your diameter of that structure. So this one is oblique, is wrong. This is right. Doesn't matter orientation of the structure where you are going to measure 
the line that is perpendicular to the perpendicular to the both side of that structure, not uh, perpendicular to the monitor or picture. Your structure is uh, uh, the orientation of structure important, not the uh, line that go with the monitor or picture. Or another one, this one here, ups, upside down. Still the same rules. The line for uh, diameter measurement is that the line is perpendicular to both sides. So this is correct measurement, not this one or not that one. Many tech, especially in the measurement of IVS and uh, uh, LVOT, they make, cons uh, ma they make mistake for this type of measurement and they try to perpendicular to the monitor and uh, the bottom not the structure, that is wrong. For example, if you want to measure an aorta, LVOT on aortic root, doesn't matter. You have to be perpendicular to both sides. So the direction of your measurement should be this, not straight down or this way. That is wrong. Perpendicular, don't forget it. Always look at uh, that one. And another tip, for measurement, in the normal people, this uh, septum wall thickness is almost the same as the posterior wall. In other words, it's symmetric. So if you are measuring and you notice, look at always your measurement number. If you notice they are not the same, ask your question if I am measuring correct way or not. Sometimes we have just uh, localized hypertrophy, but it is rare, it's not common. Maybe there is a mass or we have an infarction, that segment or part is thin or hypertrophy or a mass and become thicker. And in those cases, you can see in other view, for example, in apical tree in the PZAX. So make sure your measurement, they are matched together. Third, uh, what uh, view uh, or which view is the correct view for the LV diameter? For the, uh, the diameter of the circular shape is a line that passes through to the center of the, circ uh, the circle. So if you, your line and sector of your ultrasound wave pass, for example, this way, doesn't pass through the center this way, you make two mistakes. First, you're cutting the septum and posterior wall oblique, so you are overestimating wall thickness. Second, the diameter of LVID will be underestimated, so you make it less. So those are, uh, keep in your mind, how you know you are right or uh, in the right view and angle, <coughs> just with fanning, here is, you, you imagine you put it on the plaques here, just with fanning left and right, see image where, which spot has largest LVID at diastole. Largest LVID at diastole, when you saw it, that is your plane. That is your view that you have to measure it. You pause it, and then at the end diastole, that is almost always, not always, almost always, is correspond with end, almost end of the T wave. So at that moment that all both valves are closed, you measure those uh, wall thickness and LVID. In the systole, there is something. You know, with the systole and breathing, heart move left, right, a little up and down. So uh, maybe you're at the ostol, you are in the right angle, but at systol, maybe hard a little move that way and your plane that is stable and fixed pass through to the papillary muscle and you maybe you see at the systole some part of the papillary muscle. So the best way tip for fixing that problem is as a general rule is this. Always for all those measurements, you want to do it and freeze it and do measurement. At that moment, ask patient hold his or her breath. 
at that moment your heart doesn't move too much so you are in the right angle you can freeze it and then do your measurement another one at the septum we, if you notice here we have trabeculation a regular dentation at the right of at the side of the right ventricle don't include on your measurement in those ivs so if you a little focused you see a hyper echo line here at the side of the right ventricle a line on the ivs this is your border that, that you put your marker and measurement from there to the endocardium here at the posterior wall too there are if you notice here we, we see some corda tendine come to the view how you know that go and see all the way uh, posterior wall and you notice okay my thickness is really border is here and if you put more attention you can see a little hypoecho between corda tendine and real myocardium so put your my, uh, marker there and measure for posterior wall now let's see this one again the same general rules you have to your measurement should be perpendicular to the structure in this patient heart has been bent a little more up uh, more horizontal so you see on this uh, lv a little oblique up in, in, you can see a lot of these cases on the people short people with the big belly you can see heart is uh, angle of the aorto ventricle angle is very tight and small so again the same rules you make measurement perpendicular among all of these three only this one is perpendicular and this one this one is oblique so this not this is overestimating another one for lvid is the same rules as you remember i uh, mentioned in transthoracic the first one third of the left ventricle is rectangle shape from the papillary muscle to the base here to here if you focus that this area is rectangle so we can measure any spot from there to here as long as our measurement is perpendicular to the long axis of the heart or perpendicular to this uh, this two line or two side of the septum and posterior wall as long as is the perpendicular you are measuring right spot doesn't matter close to the mitral valve if it's not thin here or close to the papillary muscle the diameter of the left ventricle from the papillary muscle to the apex become narrower so that is the reason we use from the papillary muscle to the here so based on this explanation c and a is correct sometimes if you notice here here part of the papillary muscle but you don't go measure that one you know the thickness of the posterior wall is here so give it the same number and so you cut that those stuff don't include it and measure it but again perpendicular to the thickness perpendicular to the thickness and perpendicular to the both wall and left ventricle long axis what about the when we have sigmoid if if you know we have sigmoid septum uh, for many reasons sometimes is idiopathic we don't know why sometimes is aging process the or sometimes is hypertension chronic hypertension and sometimes is part of the cardiomyopathy hypertrophic cardiomyopathy especially in hokum and sam you can see very prominent s uh, proximal of septum prominent thick and bulging inside we call this sigmoid septum so in those cases don't measure from that spot go a little far distal and measure the largest diameter don't include papillary muscle and then that is your measurement 
in those cases that has some aneurysmal uh, and bulging some segment, for example, mid segment go bulging out, still measure that one because we have another uh, option for the apical four and two, we measure volume of left ventricle. It show that that part has been bulging and we don't have, uh, uh, the, the, our measurement doesn't affect too much. Now let's see, now about the LVOT. LVOT, you know that we have to measure at the mid systolic or end systolic, doesn't matter which one, we go for the largest diameter, that's it, done. Where do you have to measure it? From the aortic ring to half to one centimeter toward the left ventricle. But that is the things, one problem. In average uh, general population, the one centimeter of the LVOT usually is rectangle. So that is the reason one cent half to one centimeter we measure that spot. But in some patient like uh, this patient is divergence means widening, right? As aortic valve ring right after that at the systole is widening. If it's not, if it's rectangle, just rule. If widening, divergence, go close to the aortic valve ring, measure that spot. And again, as the patient hold the breath, hold, capture your image, go to the maximum, go back and forth, frame to frame and see where is, which spot is largest, has largest diameter based on your eyeball, measure it. Especially when the patient has aortic stenosis, uh, you see calcification, cusps doesn't open very well. In those cases, you have to be more sensitive and picky. And in those cases, do your measurement in two different windows. A little go off axis, go a little higher, one intercostal higher, a little make it uh, with rock and roll or heel toe, make it different and see which of those spots give you largest diameter. Take that one and record the largest diameter. And don't forget again, perpendicular to the both side, not the perpendicular to the monitor. Now, what about the left atrium? The left atrium is the same concept. You have to measure it inner to inner at end systolic, end of the T wave. At this location, usually it's rectangle, so any spot, but perpendicular to the boat wall. So in this case here, A and C is wrong, B is correct, perpendicular. Here, many you saw most probably many patients, they have orientation of the heart is this way. Again, the same way not perpendicular to the monitor, perpendicular to the two wall, so B is correct, or this way is the same, still B is correct way for measurement. Now let's see in those cases that we don't have plaques, you know there are a lot, this patient, there are a lot of cases that you don't have pla uh, plaques window. This patient had lung cancer plus severe COPD. And you can see is apical, even apical, very poor window is only apical. Why we don't measure usually in apical is the same, apical tree is the same of the apical uh, plaques. Why do we don't measure on the apical tree usually? Because it's the matter of the physics, ultrasound physics, you, you know that Axial resolution is the best when the sound is heading to the perpendicular structure. That is the reason on the plaques, sound wave on the plaques, here is the sector and sound direction. On the plaques, exactly sound wave hit the septum almost perpendicular, has highest resolution. 
in the apical tree, orientation is a little different, so the sound go parallel to the septum. So resolution drop, but still, how much dropped? Less than millimeter. So in those cases, you don't have plaques. Still, you can measure on the apical tree. It's the same. As long as you have correct image, all those criteria, cooptation of the aortic valve, largest diameter, not popular muscle, show up on the, your field. Just go back and forth, determine the border of your septum and posterior wall, measure the same technique. You are right. It's not perfect, but is acceptable. So in those cases, you can measure even RVOT, LVOT. But if it's stenotic, is a little tricky. We don't recommend because one millimeter differences affect a lot on the valve area. Except to that, those cases, still you can measure on the apical tree. If you don't have apical tree, we have many cases, I had many cases, they have chest tube, drain, uh, bandage, chest, all everywhere. You have only subcostal. Yes, you can do subcostal, go short axis, and get good PZAX on the level of the between mitral valve and papillary muscle, and measure on the short axis. All measurement is perfect and correct. Even you can do LVOT at that level. Just you have to be very careful. Open aorta, one millimeter angle down toward the left ventricle. That is your LVOT. You can measure LVOT too. Just in those cases. I hope you like it, this clips. If you still have some question or not clear, I didn't explain clear, ask and put on uh, comment, I will respond to all of them. Up to next time. Have a good time.